Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Dr. Angela Budschester. I'm so excited to be with you here on this Wednesday. You know what Wednesday in the Word is. It is midweek motivation. Now, many of you have followed me on various other platforms and I'm so glad to be able to include this on many radio stations as well to bring you you again that midweek motivation now I know that we are doing the very best we can be it that we are back in church or still attending virtual church this is just a little nibble if you will to help keep you motivated and along this spiritual path this journey that we are on with God so again welcome to Wednesday in the word so we have been looking at scripture that will cover our children. It is back to school time. Congratulations to all of our moms and dads out there, grandmas and grandpas that are help sending their little ones off to school. If you are an empty nester while your college student is away getting an education, welcome, welcome, welcome to the group. I know that you are excited about the adventures that they will embark upon, not only at their respective colleges and universities, but you can't wait to hear the stories of the things that they have to share with you. I know that I loved telling the stories to uh, my parents about what I had learned in class that day, even as a little kid in high school and including my college education as well. Now, last week we did scripture and prayer. And so many of you reached out to me and told me that you really enjoyed that. And I'm so glad that you did. We're going to wrap up this week with again, some scripture and prayer about back to school. Many folks, um, depending on where you live in the world, you didn't start school until after Labor Day. Many schools go to back before, some go after. Or you may live in a state much like California where there is year-round school and those holidays don't quite mean the same as they do to many um, other locations like um, the East Coast or perhaps even in the South where there's more traditional school. So let's go on and look at our first scripture for the day. And it is Joshua 1, 9. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That one to me talks about courage. And we need to encourage our children to be courageous while they are away from us. Courageous, you say, Dr. Angela, especially some of our elementary school aged kids, you know, they're starting kindergarten and they're concerned. They're worried, as excited as they are about going to school. They're really, they're really amped up about that, right? They're, they cannot wait. They have their best backpack, their best lunchbox or lunch bag, their brand new tennis shoes or sneakers or whatever it is, right? They're fired up about going to school. But then they get there and they may be a little anxious about leaving mom or dad for the first time. So courage is needed in that case. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. So encouraging your little one that he or she is strong. They're a big kid now. And this is what school age boys and girls do. 
Be strong and courageous. I think that many times we forget that our junior high or middle school students, this is also a time that they are experiencing something new. They're no longer babies. They're now preteens and it's new for them as well. The amount of responsibility and accountability changes when you get to middle school or junior high. Now, I know that most folks go, oh, they'll be fine. It's just sixth grade. And you're right. They will be fine. But they also have to learn how to deal with the boys and the girls now that everyone's mindset is starting to change. It's simply just a part of growing up. They too have to learn to be strong and courageous. Perhaps you have a ninth grader who is starting out, but this is a new school. They don't know anyone in this particular school, so they're the new kid on the block, right? This is a time that they are really going to have to be strong and courageous. We many times forget to view the world through their lens, to see what's going on in their environment. Or we tend to filter things through our experiences. But let's face it, school is nothing like how it was when we were in school. There are so many different things that are going on and school life has simply changed. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some similarities and depending on where your child is going to school, perhaps they are more alike than unalike. But overall, kids are different. It's a different generation. The same way that we were different from our parents and our parents from theirs. So from time to time, remember to check in with your student. See what's going on in their world according to their lens. Let's look at that scripture again. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you are you go. Now, I really like that, the wherever you go part. We can have God right there with us, no matter where we are. Again, if your student is starting a new school, or you live in a new city, or a new state even, or perhaps it's simply a different part of the city, and it would have been a different lower school that the kids in that area attended. I know that in most places, if you live on one side of the city, you would have gone to a particular school. On the other side of the city, it's a different school. So if you've moved from one side to the other, there may be some crossover folks, but it's still all brand new to them. So this week, let's help them be strong. This week, Let's help them be courageous. Let's remind them that they can do all things through Christ Jesus. Let's remind them that wherever they go, that God is with them. Lord, we pray this week that our students will be reminded of your word, that they will be strong and courageous in all that they do. Lord, we ask that Holy Spirit walk the halls with them and remind them that they're a king's kid. Remind them that you will never leave them nor forsake them. That though this may be a new experience, nothing is too big for their God. Lord, we ask that as our teachers start this work week as well, that you will cover them with your grace and your mercy. Lord, there are some teachers out there that are starting at a new school and they too might be a little anxious. Lord, we ask that you will remind them to be strong and courageous as well. 
Lord, we know that you can do all things, so we know that this too shall come to pass. We thank you in advance, Lord, for all that you will do with us and for all that you will do through us this school year. Now let's go on to the next scripture. We're looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. This theme, I like to say, is don't worry. It reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Let's look at that again. Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, I know that many times we forget to do a certain part of that. There's someone right now saying, yes, Dr. Angela, the do not be anxious part. (laughs) I have to agree with you. This is one of the things that as a pastoral counselor that I get a lot. I'm starting a new job. I'm starting a new fill in the blank, or I'm going to be in a new location type thing, right? And it's, I'm anxious. I'm worried. I'm concerned. I don't know what to expect. Well, if it happens to adults, you know that it's also going to happen with our students. So we need to remind them, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, and I like this, in every situation, that means that no matter what's going on, we can remind them that the scripture says, in every situation, by prayer and petition, but with thanksgiving as well, present your requests to God. Now, I like this because it gives us an opportunity to pray and communicate with God. It gives us an opportunity to petition, to present our position to God. But more importantly, I like what comes after that comma, with thanksgiving. Now, if you've ever been um, in a, a an event with me and you've heard me pray, you know that I, I start my prayers and I usually say, Lord, we come to you with a heart of thanksgiving. It is because of this scripture and a few others, but because of this scripture is included in that list of going before the Lord with thanksgiving, with a thankful heart, with an appreciation for not only listening, but believing that God has heard your prayer and that he will answer it. Many times people get stuck at the petition. They get stuck at the simply, dear God, I need this. God, are you listening? I need your help. And they can't move forward. They forget to be thankful, not only for the opportunity, but the fact that they know that God has heard their prayer. But they're also looking forward to the outcome. Being someone who prays on a regular basis, spending time with God is an amazing thing to do. You're able to talk with your best friend. You're able to speak with Father God or perhaps spend time with Jesus. Is Holy Spirit who you need to kind of spend the day with? Then do that. I think that with each part We are experiencing a different personality, a different side of our creator. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. The same way that you have one relationship perhaps with your mom and one relationship with your dad or one relationship with your dad and a different with your grandfather, right? You still love them. There's no love lost between any of those folks. But each one has their own special way 
of doing what it is that they do. That's how God is with each one of us. He's able to meet us where we are. He's able to understand whatever language we choose to speak to him. Be it that it is something that is very proper um, way of presenting our our petition, or perhaps it's a very casual way of saying, God, I need you right now. Are you listening? I hope you are, because here's where I need help. God knows our heart, so there is no need for us to pretend to be anyone that we aren't. He knows that we are a fill in the blank, that we are a fun person, a loving person, that we're kind. He also knows if we're a little gruff or a little rough around the edges. He knows if we've prayed yesterday or 10 years ago. The good part is, is that though he knows all of those things, it doesn't matter how you have prayed. It doesn't matter when you last prayed. He wants to hear what you have to say in your prayer. Every time we talk to God, he wants to listen to us. The good part is, is that though there are some outlines or some guidelines as far as how we should pray, if we forget to do those things, God isn't like an operator who says, sorry, you forgot to cross that T or dot that I. I'm not listening today. He still wants to hear what his beloved child has to say. I'm glad God is like that. So looking at Philippians 4, 6, again, this theme is don't worry. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Lord, we present our petition to you today. We are thankful for you granting the prayers of the righteous. Lord, we know that one prayer in particular today is that you will guide, lead, and protect our kids as they are off at school. Lord, we ask that you not only protect them, but those around them, their fellow students, their teachers, their teacher's assistants, the staff, the faculty. Lord, we ask that anyone that is on that campus, that you will Give them a piece of you, that you will remind them of who you are, that when they see our student, that they will see your light shining brightly in them. Lord, this can be a very hectic first week for many, or a first month for others. Lord, remind them not to be worried, not to be anxious that you are with them and they simply need to bring it and give it to you. Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing in the lives of our students and in the lives of our teachers this week. The next scripture that I want to share with you is Galatians 6.10. Galatians 6.10. Now, to me, this theme is do good. Galatians 6.10 reads, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Let's look at that again. Therefore, as we have opportunity, Let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. That's you and I, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are the family of believers. So let's look at that. Therefore, as we have opportunity. I like that. When the opportunity presents itself, we need to be ready. 
Let us do good to all people. I like how it says to all people. So not just people that look like us, not just our neighbors or our fellow churchgoers. We need to include the people that perhaps go to our grocery store or the people that we're not so sure who they are, but they definitely go to the same Starbucks we go to, right? Those folks as well. That we need to remember the dog groomer. We need to remember our delivery guys and gals. And boy, have they been busy over the last year. Now, on a side note, I think we all know our Amazon Prime, FedEx, and UPS drivers on site, right? We have been adjusting accordingly. Well, we need to make sure that we do good by them as well. How do we do that? How do we show our students how to be good? I know that many of you, and you've posted on social media, that you, especially on those hot days, you've left out a cooler that has water or juices in it. You've left out some snacks for those guys as well, those guys and gals as well. That is a wonderful example of showing our kids how to be good people. Or perhaps we have given up our seat to a grandmother that needed to sit down. Or perhaps a pregnant mom who needed to sit down. Showing our kids how to be good people should be something that we do every single day. Your children look to you for this type of leadership. They look to you for the direction. Now, best believe that even if you're not saying anything to them, they're definitely learning from your actions. Now, how do we know this to be true? Because when your little person becomes a teenager, or especially when they become a young adult, you'll see some things that they do And you may say, I never taught them to do that. No, you did. You know how you did? Because dad opened the door for mom. Or perhaps mom was slower when she was dealing with grandmother. Right? Those little things that we do that give our kids the example of who they should be. Well, the opposite is also true. Unfortunately, sometimes we show them improper behaviors. We show them things that we ourselves should not be doing. And sometimes they pick those up a lot quicker. We see that on social media. Those folks that are acting up or acting out. And you wonder, my goodness, what happened in the life of that person? that made them behave that way. We may never know, but we do know that sometimes the best way to deal with that situation is with love and patience. Show your kids how to be kind and good in that moment. And that lesson may be a lesson that they take with them and they pass on even to their children. But I like how it says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. We need to remember that our brothers and sisters in Christ, that they are exactly that, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And if they have a need and we're able to assist, then we should step up. Sometimes it simply is sitting with a person during lunch. It's making a phone call. It's sending them a simple little text that says, I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm here if you need me. You got this. Great job. You can do it. 
something really simple or even an emoji you know that thumbs up emoji and a heart something that is encouraging to them just to let them know that you're there if they need you being a support system for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ can be that calm that you need in a storm. I know that many of our military families that move quite often about every four, five to six years, they have to uproot their families, move generally to a place that they've never been, and unfortunately many times don't have any family members there. They need that kindness. They need to know that their church family will be their new family and that they will help support them in their spiritual and emotional needs as they get their footing. Now, we're not telling you to go out and necessarily make groceries for them and to send over hundreds of dollars of food. Not what I'm telling you to do. What I mean is, is that sometimes just saying hello to that new person can make them feel included or chit-chatting with them when you wait to pick up the kids at the end of the day. You never know how your smallest bit of kindness can really make a difference to someone new in the community. I love that it doesn't matter where I have lived. I've always had amazing neighbors. Now, many people will say, well, Dr. Angela, it really depends on the neighborhood in which you live. And there may be some truth to that. But let's say you don't live in an ideal neighborhood for right now. You can still be that shining star. You can be that person who makes the difference and simply starts to say good morning to your neighbor. So if you haven't done that, what a great thing to teach your kids. What a great way to show them that they can do something good at the beginning of the day as everyone is scrambling to the car to shuttle on off to work and school, speak to your neighbor and wish them a good morning or wish them a great day. Good morning, neighbor. Have a great day. And that's all it takes. Putting just a little bit of kind into the world. The next scripture is 1 Corinthians 16. 14. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Do it with love. I love that theme. Let's look at the scripture. Let all that you do be done in love. I love that. Let all that you do be done in love. Now, I know that that might be hard for someone listening. Dr. Angela, but I'm upset with that person. They disappointed me. They let me down. They didn't do what they promised. I understand that person is out there being a person. That human is being a human. And unfortunately, sometimes our fellow humans let us down. I know. And I'm so sorry that that happened to you. But that doesn't mean that you have to stop loving them. When we learn to look at our brothers and sisters in Christ with that agape love, when we learn to look at them using the eyes of God, then we see people differently. We don't see them for only their physical attributes. But instead, we see them for the beautiful creation that they are. And that can be kind of difficult when you're upset. But if your aim, if your goal is to do everything from a place of love, then it changes the outcome. It shifts your paradigm ever so slightly. And in that shift, 
comes new and different possibilities. When we err on the side of love, then we are able to look at life from a different point of view and perspective. So many times when someone has done something, we can come from a place of of hurt or from a place of, I can't believe that she did that. I can't believe he said that, right? And it's like, "Uh uh-oh, slow down. Let's really look at what's going on here. Sometimes people are just forgetful or they aren't looking at the full picture. They're just looking at their little piece of the puzzle. So the outcome isn't what you were expecting. But when we look at it and say, if this person loves me, would they have done this? If the answer is no, then let's say, perhaps they didn't do this on purpose, but it was truly an accident. Let's see. When you talk to people and you say, did you know that this happened? Many times they're going to say, oh my goodness, I had no idea that that happened or that that would be the outcome. I'm so sorry. I'll never do that again. And they usually don't. See, when we come from a place of love, then we try to give people the benefit of the doubt. We try. Now, unfortunately, many times people keep dropping the ball. That's a whole different story for a different day. But in this particular example, if someone apologizes for something that they've said or something that they've done, they're coming from a place of love. It's hard, it's tough to ask someone about something that may have made you feel something less than positive. It is equally as hard for many people to apologize. Now, I'm one of those people that if I've done something to hurt your feelings in any way, I want you to tell me. I want to apologize. I want to make sure that you know that that wasn't my intention. So if that has happened to you, if someone has done something to you, go to them lovingly. If someone confronts you and says, this is what happened, listen with loving ears. Apologize and love your brother and sister in Christ the way that God intended us to. Then you may be saying, but my husband is the one that did it. Dr. Angela, it's my wife. I understand. I really do. But even though they may hold those titles, we have to remember that we're all just humans. With that being said, we may mess up from time to time. We're surely going to drop the ball more times than we should. So be loving in your presentation. Be kind in your delivery. And I'm sure you'll be able to work it all out. So combining these two scriptures of doing good and doing it with love, let's take a moment to pray. Lord, we know that this week may be a tough week for someone. It may be hard for them to love someone that they have to encounter this week because that person may have done something to them. Lord, we ask that you walk slowly with them this week, that you guide them in all that they do. But Lord, we ask that you also remind them that they are good and that they can do things from a place of love. How are they good? Why are they good? Because Lord, you are within each one of us. Lord, we ask that we spend more time in your presence so that we can absorb even more of you. Lord, we know that there is going to be that trying time that will come and we want to be ready. 
Lord, there needs to be so much more love in the world today. We see on the news that people are arguing, that they're, they're fighting, that they're bickering. Lord, we know that that is not of you. We ask that in those moments, Lord, that you can calm our spirit that you can remind us of all the love that you have, not only for us, but for our fellow believers and for those who have not yet grown to know you. Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to be kind to someone this week. We thank you for the opportunity to teach our kids to be loving human beings. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we will have not only tomorrow, but in the tomorrows of tomorrow. That these lessons that you teach us, Lord, that we will hold on to them, that they will be the stepping stones that we need to become the best people that we could possibly be. Lord, we thank you in advance for the shift in the world, in our personal lives, and in the lives of others. Lord, we know that you can do this because you're an awesome God. We know that you can do this because you've done it before. Lord, we know that you will do this because we know that you want us to be more like you. Lord, thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for all that you teach us. And Lord, thank you for all that you will do through us today, tomorrow, and in the future. Now, my next scripture that I want to share with you is John 15, 12. John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my command, that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you you. Now, I must admit that this sounds like such a simple task. It sounds like something that we all should be able to do. But unfortunately, many times we have been tested. Someone says something or does something and boy, do you forget to be as loving and as kind as you possibly could be. You've been provoked. I know, I see it on social media all the time. Well, unfortunately, this is a side effect (laughs) to being human. But I think that every day, if we strive to be that person, then we can become that person. I find it interesting that of all the things that Jesus could have said, that he decides to remind us to love one another, to love one another. He doesn't say that you have to be, you know, friends for five years, that you need to have been classmates, that you need to go to the same church, or that you even need to live on the same street, but a simple, all-encompassing reminder to love one another, as I have loved you. Now we have to remember that Jesus is going to lay down his life for each and every one of us. That is a lot of love. And if that is the example for how we are supposed to love one another, to be willing to lay down your life for a friend, for your brother, for your sister. That, that's a lot of love, my friend. And I say to that, 
this. Practice doing that. Sometimes folks will push you. Oh boy, will they push you. But if we practice, we will become better and better at it. Our kids are depending on us being that example. You may be saying, well, Dr. Angela, I thought we were talking about back to school. What do you mean? As teachers, you may have some students that don't like each other in your class. And there's going to be some bickering. There's going to be, you know, that little finger pointing, um, just trying to get the other person riled up type of behaviors. And in your patience, in your patience, if you can be an example and show them how to be more loving, how to be more kind, how to be good, then you might be the difference that that student needs. I remember I used to be a teacher's assistant uh, for a few years. And there was one teacher that I found her to be absolutely amazing. She never raised her voice above a very um, loud whisper, if you will. Um, she was a very soft-spoken woman. But every now and again, her students that were in elementary school would get a little rowdy, as little people can, when they've been sitting for quite some time. She never lost her cool. She would simply say, Oh, I see what time it is. And then she taught them that they say something like, What time is it? And she would say, It's music time. And she would put on this song. And it was kind of um like doing the, the chicken dance, I believe it is, you know, where you move your body and you do all these things. And it got up all of that energy that the kids had. But how did she know to do that? From years of teaching, from years of observation, from years of taking all of the information that she knew And instead of turning on her students and kind of giving them negative energy back, she gave them love. She gave them patience. And she allowed them to be exactly who they are, but with a focus. So in helping them learn how to direct that energy, in helping them learn how to focus on the task at hand, You do the chicken dance a few times. You've gotten all of that energy out. Then she was able to say, you know, oh, what time is it? And then they would say, it's whatever the subject was, math time. And they were ready to do math. I loved that she was able to do that. I applauded her for doing that. She could have sent the students to the principal's office. She could have given them the equivalent of a timeout. You know, she could have sent a note home to their parents. This kid is too talkative. This child dis- is disruptive in the classroom. She could have done all of those things. But instead, she used her wisdom over the years to redirect and focus them with the heart of love. Now, I told her at the end of that day that I was just simply floored by what she did in a positive way. And she kind of told me what I just shared with you. I've been a teacher longer than you've been on this earth. And I've learned some things along the way. And sometimes what a child needs is for you to remember that they're a child. You know, so many times we try to make children into little adults. And we go, why are they doing this? You're acting like a child. Guess what? They are children. (laughs) They are children. So if they're children, they're going to behave like little kids. So sometimes it is up to us as the adult to help them, to guide them, but to love them 
even in those moments when it could be difficult. So I applaud those teachers out there that are doing the tough jobs, that are teaching those kids that are trying your patience. To those teachers out there that have some kids out there with a chip on their shoulder, or those kids out there that perhaps they feel that they are entitled to a thing or two, I pray that you will be patient with them, that you will love them in spite of their actions, and that every day that you can bring a little bit more God into their lives and help them and show them what it means to be a Christian. I want to go now to our next scripture, and that is Luke 2, 52. Luke 2, 52, and it reads, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with people. Favor. Now, many of us have heard people say, you know, I pray for favor, or I understand that God has given me favor amongst men. Now, depending on what denomination you attend, you may or may not have heard that. So this scripture, Luke 2, 52, is one of those scriptures that many people are not familiar with. But now you are. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with people. So what does this mean? We pray that the people that are in the lives of our students, that they will look upon our student with favor. That they will understand that our our little guy or gal, They're the apple of their eye, if you will. That they see something in that child, your child. And they want to help nurture that. We pray that our teachers will have favor amongst their colleagues. That the principal will call upon them, right? So when they're having meetings and perhaps that teacher will have a suggestion, And the principal will say, huh, never thought of it that way. It is so important that we understand that these things don't just happen, that they don't just come about without that prayer. That God will place us exactly where we need to be, and especially when we believe that we have been placed there. That when we believe that this thing that we're doing being a teacher or being the student is exactly where we need to be for a time such as this. I remember that when I was little, my parents used to tell me that I never had to worry about anything going on in the household. I didn't have to worry about money or worry about bills or any of those things because that was their concern. That was their responsibility. And it was handled. I must admit that my parents were great parents. They handled the business. And my responsibility was simply to go to school and learn. To be the best student that I could be. Understanding my role in the family. I loved school. I know that many don't. But I loved school. I enjoyed my teachers. I enjoyed being poured into And I think because I was such a sponge, my teachers enjoyed my being their student as well. Now, I know that there are going to be some students out there that are going to have a tough go at it because they dislike school because of the things that happen while they're there. Perhaps they are going to the school that wasn't their school of choice because perhaps your parents have gotten divorced and now you live in a new neighborhood and you never wanted to go to that school. I know, it could be tough. Or perhaps you are now in a new city because mom or dad have, you know, gotten a new job 
and you don't know anyone here. So you're not really looking forward to going to school because you had to start all over again. And you miss your friends and family at the old location and at the old school. See, we don't many times think about what is going on in the world of our students. We only see it through our lens, through the filter in which we live. But I want you to take some time this year as we reflect and realize that it's been a pretty tough year for everyone. So take time to pray that our students, no matter what age, that they will find favor with the people that they have to interact with. Especially in that class for our older students that you know may be a tough class for them. If they don't like history or perhaps they dislike gym or um, they're starting a, a new math class and it may be a little tough for them this year. You know, uh, maybe it might be their, their first go at trigonometry or their first go at calculus. And even though they're really great in math, this one might be a little tough for them. Or perhaps it's a science class. You so loved science before, but chemistry, you heard, is going to be a little tough. <laughs> I understand. As much as I loved school, each year brought a something new, a something different. And the first few weeks might be a little tricky. Parents, if you understand that and remember that each year is a new year and it might be a little tricky for your student, pray that favor over your student. Pray that they find favor with their instructors, their professors, their teachers. So I'd like to offer this prayer. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have placed in our hearts. Lord, we know that there will be those who unfortunately do not know your love. We ask that in those moments that we will see them through your eyes. But more importantly, they will see your love in us. That they will be open to receive it and that we will freely give it to them. Lord, we know that during the past few months, it has been quite a trying time across this beautiful globe of ours. We have been dealing with the pandemic, not just here in the States, but internationally as well. Lord, as we start to come out from under all of that, Lord, we ask that you will remind us to be kind and patient with one another that there may be some folks that are still having a tough go at it, but that you will remind us of who we are, that we have the mind of Christ, that we are patient and slow to act, that we are long to listen, and that we will give great advice because it will be directly from you. Lord, we ask that if there's a, a difficult student in, our, in the classroom or perhaps there's a teacher that a student isn't getting along with, Lord, we, we present that person to you today and that you will give that person a solution that they'll figure out how to make this year the best year that it could be because we know that you can do it. So Lord, we thank you in advance for all the love that you are pouring into us that allows us to pour into someone else. Lord, we thank you for the favor that you have given us. We thank you for the favor that you have given to the teachers and to the students. Lord, we thank you for the courage that you have given to the students and the teachers this year. Lord, we thank you for their tenacity to be strong and to be courageous. Lord, we thank you for squashing any anxious feelings. 
We thank you for the gift of calm and patience. Lord, we thank you for the willingness to do good and to be kind. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have shared with us and for the loving, kind actions that we will share with another. Lord, we thank you for the command to love one another as you have loved us. We ask that we be given the might to carry that out because we know it is the right thing to do. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and all that you will do. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you so much for spending time with me here during Wednesday in the Word. I'm so excited to not only to be able to share this with people on this platform, but on other platforms as well. I have enjoyed my time with you here today. I hope that you have enjoyed your midweek Christian empowerment, and I will see you back here next week. Until next time, everyone. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, Dr. Angela here. Did you know that Daily Spark is now on Facebook? That's right, you can visit with me at facebook.com forward slash Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I want to know more about what you're thinking. I'd love to know which interview did you find the most entertaining or the most informative. I want to talk to you and I want you to be able to talk to me. Simply visit facebook.com forward slash Daily Spark with Dr. Angela.